All right, well, welcome everyone to Introduction to Buying and Selling Greener Homes. Um, this course is approved for one hour and continuing education units um, among many different credentials, including AIBD, GPCI, AIA, um, BPI, uh, as well as um, uh, the Michigan uh, Realtor CEU uh, specialty uh, specifically for this course. Now, this course is brought to you by the nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. And today, uh, I will not only be your moderator, but I will be your co-presenter. My name is Brett Little, and I am the program manager here. Um, the whole idea is that how do we communicate buying and selling of homes that have green features? Every home, I think you will find, does have green features to it. It's just a matter of finding what they are, knowing how to easily identify them without having to be you know, in doing this every day like I do, um, there are simple things you can figure out that are in every single home out there and highlight it to those uh, as a way to upsell it or uh, showcase it um, where there might be a lot of other homes being, uh, you know, looked at around the, around the community. This will help your home stand out when you point to many of these features. Now, before we get there, I want to say a huge thanks to our top tier sponsor, um, Reem. Introducing the all-new Rheem Proterra, an energy-efficient, quiet, all-electric hybrid heat pump water heater. The future of water heating is finally here. 40, 50, 65, and 80 gallons. Very excited to announce today, I just learned about this, they won the Green Builder Media 2021 Sustainability Awards for the most innovative product of the year. What makes them so innovative? Um, you're talking about super energy efficiency, maybe all the way up to 400% efficiency over standard tank electric or gas systems, uh, 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 five year operating, five operating modes, um, good warranties, water leak detection, and works with automated, automated home systems. Now, how do these systems work? You can see the vent there at the top draws in air uh, and it enters an upper intake port that passes through a filter and then an eco-friendly refrigerant absorbs that heat a compressor pumps that heat refrigerant to the condenser. The heat is transferred into the water tank and a condensate routes water away from the unit. Uh, these things can be installed in many different situations in many different climates. They can be ducted as well if you don't want them stealing air from the area. And you can see on the bottom, they can be chained together to serve multifamily housing uh, projects. And we see that happen all the time. Really cool technology here built right into your phone, getting um, being able to control the device, leak sensor detection, energy use tracking, operating modes and schedules. This is really cool technology because what's happening now is that utilities are trying to shift loads away from certain times of the day and they're paying you and your clients a lot of money to do this. And so these systems in certain utilities around the country can work together to ensure that the water heater is only using energy at certain times of the day when it's cheap and the utilities are shifting it away uh, and that can help save your clients a lot of money. And it still keeps the water uh, nice and hot because there are strategies that can be used to do that. Um, so you can check that out at NRDC where they talk a little bit more about that. And then thanks to our second tier sponsor, T-Stud, structurally insulated framing systems behind the wall. They can come pre-insulated with foam or bare naked where you can add, uh, your client can add to their new home or their remodel or their new addition, any kind of insulation they like. Check them out over at tstud.com. Help us stop uh, thermal bridging and heat transferring between the walls. Um, so I hope all of you know who I am. And if you don't, um, we can catch up some other time. Uh, I'll be speaking today, but I'm really excited to also introduce you to our other speakers before we start. Tammy Stone, uh, EXP Realty owner and former GHI board officer. Um, and you know, to read her bio, she says, throughout my career, I've developed a reputation as a visionary marketing expert with 92% of my business originating from referrals. I'm an excellent communicator with experience in green built homes, buyer representation, professional seller marketing, lakefront homes, foreclosures, and short sales. And then also, this guy's got a fantastic first name, Brett uh, uh, Bredevaux. He's owner of greenhomesgr.com. The goal, to make homeowners aware that there is significant financial gain in becoming more resource efficient in your residential home life, to help buyers find energy efficient homes and retrofit existing homes in order to increase their resource efficiency over the life of the home ownership, and to help sell sellers display the true value that their efficient homes will provide future uh, owners uh, with more benefits. 
Um, so I'm really excited to have them, and they're going to be popping into this conversation as we go. Um, one thing you should know about this session is that it is not a um, passive uh, uh, listening session. Uh, you will need to engage. We want you to help answer some questions, to jump into the dialogue in the Q&A bo uh, box, and tell us why you came up with your answers. So, so this isn't just passive listening, so make sure to, to tune in throughout the session and jump in. And then afterwards, we're doing something uh, that we're going to try out that's unique on our realtor focus sessions for this year. Is we're going to do a sort of roundtable after the event formally ends, where we can kind of introduce each other, who's on our home valuations team and our committee, and then also who's out there in the industry doing this, and just have a conversation about who you are, what's important to you, and to figure out if there's a way we can, you know, collaborate more. Um, so let's dive into it. Um, when we talk about homes, we talk about um, the five pillars of green homes. And so, you know, what we're talking about is it's really just not, you know, it's not just uh, solar panels that we're looking at here. Um, it's, it's looking at other more in-depth definitions. So sustainability, high performance, systems thinking, utility savings, increased value at the end of the day. Um, each of these components of a home are gonna, you're gonna need to understand and figure out how to help um, identify these homes for your buyers or when you're selling a house and how they all interrelate to each other and in some cases benefit each other. In other cases, there are trade-offs between impacting one or the other. So we're gonna dive, our entire session is gonna be about these five pillars of green homes and different simple ways you can identify ways uh, to help uh, you know, make those improvements. So the easiest one is energy, energy conservation, energy efficiency, energy ties into comfort. If you're saving energy, you're typically also more comfortable, um, your clients are. Um, and so you know, we all know a lot of this stuff, right? LED light bulbs, pipe wrap, uh, insulation, air sealing, um, you know, double pane windows, maybe triple pane. You guys know a lot of this stuff. I don't have to go into it because everybody really knows these things um, and you're pretty smart. So the question really is, how is it that you can quickly identify these things, uh, where your clients' homes are at, and then where they need to go from there if they're buying a home and wanna make improvements or if they're selling a home and trying to communicate the efficiencies? So the first thing, of course, and this should be simple, but we still have to say it, is get those energy bills. Get the gas bills, get the electric bills, um, and start to compile a full year's worth of data, if not more if you have it, which then paints a picture and tells a narrative, a story of what's going on in that home. And what we know from a study done in Elevate Energy is that when you disclose these utility bills during the transaction process, you have less time on market, increased value, uh, and quite frankly, this has nothing to do whether whether the bills are low or high. It's just the fact that you're being transparent. And this speaks to everything we're gonna talk about here, is that if you can be more transparent with everything you do, even if it's bad news, and I know you, you it might be hard to hear that, but even if it's bad news, um, you know, being more transparent leads to honesty and leads to people wondering, well, what is this other home that I'm considering to buy instead of yours isn't telling me. So I think it goes a long way. And that would be my encouragement is to open up more and be more honest. And that goes for everything we do. Um, so what do you do with the utility bills? Well, okay, so you've got these bills. What do they mean? Well, you can go to the EPA's home energy yardstick. And as long as you've got the zip code of the home you're buying or selling, the square footage, um, you can either do the number of occupants or the way it just the way occupants are assessed in the in the home world is bedrooms plus one. So if it's a three bedroom home, you would assume there's four occupants no matter what. Um, and then again, the monthly utility bills. And then you're going to populate that data in there. It's all free, easy to do, and it's going to spit out sort of a yardstick. And so anything less than a five is a home that's not doing so great. Anything more than a five is a home that's doing really well compared to the other homes in the neighborhood. So again, imagine if you're going to sell a home and it's scoring better than a five, you can celebrate that. You can put that in the listing and say, hey, look, here's where we're at. And if it's doing worse and you're buying a home and your clients are looking at which home to buy that's gonna cost them the least to operate, well, you know, the ones that are gonna score lower, you know, aren't so great. Um, and then you might just start to wonder, well, what is it that's making these numbers 
you know, these utility bills go up or down. And so again, you know a lot of these things, but this is the home uh, energy use pyramid. And really, as we, you know, start at the bottom of the pyramid, these are things that are quite frankly unchangeable, uh, right? You're, these are just set in stone, unless you're helping design a new home, which in that case, you can change many of these things. And then as you go up, you're talking about things that uh, save more energy, save more money for your clients, but are difficult to change. So foundation and windows, very expensive to change, uh, but save a lot of energy and money. Insulation and air sealing, depending on a house, can be changed. Um, heating and cooling, water heating, that all can be changed. Um, and then quite frankly, you know, you, you can help identify homes where it does need to be changed and better ways to improve them. Lighting and appliances, again, those are low-hanging fruit. Energy Star appliances, LED lighting, blah, blah, we hear it every day. You can change those things all day long, and that's good to identify them. That's easy stuff, but it's only going to have such a sliver of impact on your client's savings. And then lastly, the thing you can't change when you're buying or selling a house is behavior and how someone behaves in that house. But the good news is, is that's such a small sliver, maybe 10% of the operating energy use is has anything to do with anyone's behavior unless they're operating like a grow house or something, which now can happen in Michigan. Um, and so, you know, it, th those are the rare circumstances, but that doesn't always happen. So the good news is you're not relying on factors outside of your control. You can measure all these things. So the first thing you do is get a hire someone to come and do a blower door test. Now that might be the home inspector. Hopefully it is. Hopefully they can offer that service. If not, it's a third party rater. Um, and we've actually seen some realtors who do this too in some markets, but what you're trying to aim for is maybe a 20% reduction in air infiltration in an existing home, and then a number called 0.25 CFM per enclosure if you're helping sell a new home. That's kind of the number you're trying to target. So these blower door tests are associated with code now, they're associated with utility rebates and everything. So if you don't have a blower door friend, you've got to make a friend who does blower door. I would in fact make three friends who does blower door testing and get them on speed dial because you're going to need them. Um, and then next is what we're going to do. We're going to take what you just saw on that pyramid. We're going to take the blower door numbers and we're going to throw them into two different programs. So if you're doing new homes uh, and major renovations, uh, you're going to see something called the ResNet HERS index rating. Um, this is mostly focused on new construction. A third of all new homes in the country last year used it. Um, and then on bottom for existing homes, you have the DOE's home energy score. Either way, you're going to want to know one, depending on what market you work in, you're going to want to know a lot about one of these. You're going to want to become an expert in that because every home is eventually going to have an energy label on it, just like a car does. It's just, um, it's just going to happen. So basically what these things look like is, you know, you've got, this is the home energy score. You've got a you've got this report, right? Your, your auditor is gonna give your client this report and it's gonna say, here's where your home is at now. Here's how it scores, one really bad, 10 really good. Here's how much it costs to operate. Here's what your energy use and your carbon emissions are. And then if you make these improvements when you buy this house and you can fund it right into the mortgage, uh, ideally you can get your home up to this score and you can save this much energy on your utility bills and ensure that you've got a good total cost of uh, home ownership. And then again, if you're doing a new construction, working with a new construction client, you can help them get a, a HERS index rating, and that's on a scale of like zero to 200, 100 being a standard built to code home, though Michigan usually fares around 65 or so. And anything lower is more energy efficient, a number 1% more efficient for every drop you have. So this can all be figured out in the design stage. If you're helping a builder sell a home, tell them to get their rating done in the design stage so you can help them communicate the energy efficiency of their home and then you know, be able to go from there. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, you wanna have your energy assessor friend, your HERS index rater, your home energy score assessor, your blower door. You wanna be friends with those folks, right? You wanna find your local one in your backyard or few and get them on speed dial. And we can uh, we can help you uh, find those folks. We do some of that work too, but they're gonna help do all those assessments. And during the new construction phase, or in addition especially, they're gonna be looking at things like slab insulation, right? It gets covered up, you can't see it. That's something you can help market and sell, right? You can do a photo op while they're doing their inspection. 
Same thing with behind the drywall, right? That stuff gets covered up. You can't show that to your clients, but if you're doing a new home or an addition, there it is. The energy rater is gonna look at it. You can take photos of it. You can say, look, here's this behind the walls, this other house you're buying, you don't know what's going on back there. Same with the ducks. We see this all the time. Ducks that are panned into joists, very bad. Leak air all over the place, cause moisture issues. So the raters are gonna see that and flag it during the construction process so it's fixed. And again, this is another thing you can show behind the drywall uh, to your clients that, hey, this house was designed and built better. And then when all that work's done, hopefully the home has a really good score on it, you know, maybe in a 10 and has a really low utility bill, really low utility usage. And that really ties into value. So you can see this home energy score report here shows this house here on average is gonna spend $731 a year on their utility bills. But the average home in the area uh, built to the same size is probably spending nearly $3,000 in their utility bills. That has value. You can communicate that value easily to your clients if they're deciding which home to pick. You can communicate that value easily to the appraiser who may utilize it. Um, and we're seeing now, like in Denver, you know, they use these home energy scores and they surveyed the community and it, they said, you know, 82% said the score will help me save energy. 65 said the score will help me save money. 44 said it will help me improve my comfort. People see the value in these things. Another study done by ACEEE, which we have a whole webinar recorded on. Here's a snapshot I wanted to show you. They did the home energy score listings on the MLS during the sale process. The ones that had low scores, 23% less views. The ones that had more higher scores, 14% more views. So you can see already you got we gotta get these scores up and we gotta you know, be uh, aware of them. And one of the reason is, is just to make sure that that we're ahead of the game because what's going to happen eventually is uh, you've got um, something like uh, uh, energy disclosure laws coming. So like in Portland, Oregon, every time you list a home on market for sale, there you are required to get one of these scores done. There's a city in Michigan that's looking at doing this here fairly soon. It's coming all across the country. These disclosures are coming. So you should get ahead of the curve now and start scoring your home so that when it does come, it's not something new that you need to learn. Um, and this has benefits because you can help them fill out the residential green and energy efficiency appraisal addendum, hand it to the appraiser if you're selling a home, get extra value. Hand it, uh, if you're buying a home, get that extra borrowing power during the financing process. And you can find these appraisers, they have certifications, they've been trained to do this stuff and they know that it's coming and they know what to look for and when you're trying to help your clients figure out if they're buying a home and they want to get their score up, they um, can use the mortgage process to do that, right? And so you can see here, they might go buy a home and pay $1,500 in their mortgage, but they're going to cost them $500 um, a month in utility. So that's total cost of home ownership. It's a new phrase. It's something that you can't forget about. Um, and so $2,000 it costs you know, to maintain, operate this home. But what if they, during the buying process, you help them out and you know maybe they, they improve the home and now their mortgage is 1800 and their utility bills are only 200. They're still paying the same amount. That's sort of worst case scenario, but they now have all brand new systems. They're more energy efficient. They're more comfortable in their home. And what they're also doing is building equity because when you pay the utility company, you don't build any equity. You just you're just paying them, right? And the money, it always goes up and you can never pay the loan off, right? But you can pay a mortgage off. So you just build more equity. You can help your clients build that equity, pay less on the utility, pay more in the mortgage, and then have a more valuable home. So there's all sorts of financing mechanisms out there. Uh, utility incentives, they can be used to do this. Federal tax credits, 26% back for solar and geothermal. Local green banks like Michigan Saves here in Michigan that can help add additional value if you can't get it in the mortgage. Property Assess Clean Energy. Um, Freddie Mac Green Choice. Uh, great opportunity to help finance this. Traditional construction loan. I just use this to go net zero on, or zero energy, zero carbon on my house. And it's just a traditional construction loan that anyone can use um, to make these um, improvements. Um, so lastly here, before we wrap up energy and hand it over um, is, is solar, right? You know, eventually you're gonna start selling homes with solar or your clients are gonna ask, is this home I'm buying going to work with solar? 
And that's really important because you can, you yourself can go and help them go to the N NREL's PV Watts calculator. And it's a really cool free tool where you can do almost a virtual satellite assessment of the home. And it tells you where you can put solar, if solar would work or if it wouldn't. And you can do this quick assessment before your client hires a professional. Or if you're selling a home with solar and you have no data on it, this is something that could help you try to, to figure that out. But you know, like here in Michigan, they say, you know, does solar work in the wintertime? And so you can see, hopefully, here's my current system. It's cloudy here right now. And some of my energy is being generated right now by the sun as I speak to you in the dead of winter in the clouds. And just yesterday, I'm excited to announce that um, we had our uh, first ever day where we uh, uh, totally generated um, off the off the grid. And, and so you can see uh, just here, um, oh, it's not coming up, there it is. So just yesterday, um, there was a point there where you can see that all that yellow kind of popping up, that's where we were totally run by solar on our house in the dead of winter. So we know it works. And the question is, when is the return on investment for your client? Um, and so they can finance that solar right into their new mortgage, you know, when they're buying that uh, new house. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to hand it over to Tammy Stone, and we're going to guide you through and talk a little bit about health. And we hope you're going to actually dive in, and we want to hear your feedback as we're going. So Tammy, take it away. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so obviously with COVID, with 2020, health is now one of the most important issues for home buyers, probably even more so than energy. So most people are working from home. According to the EPA, the levels of indoor air pollutants are two to five times higher than outdoor levels. So with health being the primary concern, how do you help buyers and sellers um, identify healthy home features? So we're gonna start asking some questions. Um, and this is where a lot of the interaction is gonna come in, but which one of these, the right side or the left side, is a healthier home feature and why? And if you just wanna throw those questions right into the Q&A box. All right, so we got a right side natural light, left side left side right side someone can't tell <laughs> hey we stumped you right allows light in um and i actually like this i like uh and real quick before we go over i really like this and and and, and, it, and it wasn't meant to be a trick question here but i really like how a lot of people are catching on this natural lighting piece because it is a huge part of health um, and so uh, we actually did uh, a part of this presentation for students yesterday and they were saying the same thing and and that's and that's great so here I'll turn it over now though Tammy. All right so actually the real answer is the left side and the left side displays the shoe rack so some studies have shown that the shoes bring in 140 times as much bacteria from the outside. So the shoe rack allows for the dirt and the grime to stay in one place instead of tracking it through the house. So were you guys surprised by that? <laughs> All right, so here we have another one. Which one has the healthier home features and why? And again, uh, the light, the, the letting the light in, I'm glad you guys got that on the last one. I do want to say, uh, try to ignore it on this one. <laughs> All right, so we've got, we've got a lot of rights coming in. A uh, bottom, which is right, we'll give you that. Um, mostly uh, mostly on, on the right side, so tell them, tell them what they want. Okay. The right side, um, if a home has a vented hood, you can ensure the cooking pollution is exhausted. So that removes the contaminants from the kitchen instead of breathing in the aftermath of dinner, causing possible eye, nose, and throat irritation. So it's really important to have that vented hood in the kitchen. So there you go. All right, so which one is the healthier home feature in here? Any comments, Brett? 
Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I gave everyone who was thinking a chance. But uh, yeah, we're uh, pretty much unanimous here. We got a smart crowd here today. That's great. Um, so pretty much unanimous on the uh, left side there. Okay. All right. So that is the right answer. Left side, all electric stoves are powered by electricity, not gas. And it's safer because it doesn't emit carbon monoxide. Induction and electric also use less energy. So. All right. So if you open up the cabinets in a home, you're helping buy or sell. See the, key, the KCMA label? It means the cabinets have reduced formaldehyde, which is a very toxic air particle in wood products. So just be aware of that. We'll go to, there we go. All right, so another question, which one is better, left or right, and why? So we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of right sides, a lot of right sides. Um, somebody mentioned left side because it's electric, interesting. Um, right side because it's insulated. So what do we got? All right, so we got the right one because it's sealed combustion, which um, vents the pollution from the water heater, such as carbon monoxide, right out and is more energy efficient. Now on this particular slide, on the left side, this is the future. This is where you see the electric water heater. You know that it doesn't have any pollution going into the home, but the electric uses a lot of energy. This heat pump water heater is 400% more efficient than the standard gas or electric. So that's what's new and fantastic about the water heaters that's coming out. And there is a bonus point, uh, again, for the other one there on the right. What is another healthy or or durability feature that someone sees on this one that you might want to look for when you see these that you can easily spot and point out to your clients. Anybody see it there on the right one? Yeah, yep, pan, drain pan, right? Drain pans there, that's an easy thing to say, hey, look, if this thing springs a leak, uh, it's going to get caught. Um, and that, you know, that's a real simple thing to see and communicate. Okay, one more, I think. Which one? Um, left or right, and why? Or I guess top and bottom. This top and bottom. <laughs> Tricked you on that one. <laughs> oh, we're getting a lot of top, better filtration, much thicker. Yep, it seems to be a, a unanimous crowd there. Hey, right. good job, you guys. So you're correct, the top, the thicker filter has a higher MERV rating. So that stands for minimum efficiency reporting values. So the higher the rating, that is the filter's ability to capture larger particles between 0.3 and 10 microns. So that's better for trapping specific types of particles. And I would just add to this that, um, you know, on those ratings, um, you know, the, the, the ones that's the, the MERV ratings, you know, they're usually a lot of times they're four, eight is good. And 13 is what we are hoping to start seeing in more projects and offices because those start to catch um, uh, airborne viruses. Uh, and they also catch PM 2.5, which can be caused by, you know, cooking or wildfire. So it's kind of a, a benefit to try to get in HEPA filtration now, especially these days. Um, you know, to ensure maximum health. All right, this might be fun. Um, do the bath fan test. So hold up some toilet paper and does it stick? If it sticks, you know it's venting. So proper bath fans obviously reduce mold and from ba bathroom moisture. They can run 24 seven to properly ventilate the home, which is now code on all the new Michigan homes and in other states. So a good way to check that. And then this is just a really good summary, um, hopefully a very easy um, image to kind of talk, you know, see what we already talked about. And from this point, now Brett's going to share one of his personal indoor air quality stories to help you identify and tie it into greener homes. 
Thanks, Tammy. Thanks for joining us. Um, no and yeah, so, you know, I, uh, if some of you were on the session here a little bit back, you might have heard this, but I'll um, kind of be brief, especially for those of you who are new. But, um, you know, for, for me, um, I've got a device here. And I think this, again, is going to be the future where if you're helping a client sell a home and, again, you're just looking for ways to communicate the benefits of it, I would say, you know, give your clients um, uh, an air quality monitoring device. And we have many different ideas on what those could be and see, you know, what their air quality is. And if it's good, this is something you can celebrate and show off easily. Um, and so this is just a really good example here where um, my particular device was um, detecting radon in my house since June. The green means it was in good shape for the most part. Um, you know, yellow means it's kind of caution, red means dangerous levels. And so, um, you know, as winter got closer, uh, because of pressure changes in the ground, um, it started getting worse and worse. And then you can see here at this peak, it peaked up here. And this was actually after I had already installed my radon system. Um, and so, uh, so this is a, a, an easy feature you can find on homes and you can market them. If you see these little radon systems outside, um, you can see on the inside, on the right picture on the bottom, if you go down in the basement, you can see this pipe coming in and going down into the slab. Uh, and then on the outside, you'll see this little fan here kicking it up into the air. That's something you can put in the listing as a huge benefit because radon is the number two cause of lung cancer. Um, but most why I'm telling my story is that our power went out and so it spiked up. It had just started going down here at this uh, yellow uh, uh, level here. Um, and so uh, it spiked up when our power went out. And had I not had this air quality monitoring device to alert me, I would have went weeks or months with high radon levels through the winter um, just because, yeah, I would have just assumed the system was working, but it, the power draw got cut and, it, and, and, the, and the breaker uh, flipped off during the power outage and it didn't come back on, which isn't normal. But um, that's the importance of having continuous air quality monitoring. And it's a great way that if your clients are gonna sell their home and they know they've got a good air quality, prove it, you know, don't just, you can't just say you have good air quality. How, now you can prove it and people are gonna start asking for this just like they're asking for utility bills. And so if you can show them through these different sensors that you've got data tracking uh, uh, low CO2, which is good, low VOCs, uh, good humidity, good temperature, good uh, radon levels, and PM 2.5 that doesn't get up too high when you're cooking, you know, that can be very important. And more than just air quality, um, sound quality is also very important. Noise can impact our health and our comfort significantly in ways that we might not even have thought of it. And so you can download this app for free. It's called, called the NIOSH app down on the bottom and go into your client's home, turn on all their systems, and then you can record it and see how loud it is. So this is my home. And as I talk, it ruins it. But you want to be down around 35 to 45 when all systems are running at full speed, because then that means you've got a quiet home. And again, if you had that, sell it, you know, put it in there. Um, Here's one last health-related challenge. Left side or right side? Which is the healthier home feature and why? We've got a right side. Right side sun protection with the overhang. Yes, I like that. Left, less, the left side has less plastic, that's interesting. Plants on the right side, plants are good. So I'm talking about healthy home here. You know, forget, there are benefits to both, but yeah. <laughs> so got a lot of good conversation here. Um, so the left side, if you look real closely on the right, you'll see there's a step. It's a ever small step, but there are steps. And on the right, on the left side, there are no steps at all. I believe, uh, I think it was 2010, someone told me some data where like 54% of in-home emergency room visits were due to people just falling downstairs. The fact of the matter is steps can be dangerous and our new homes can be designed easily without them. 
And also, we need to make sure we're designing homes and buildings for people who have health situations that they cannot access certain things. And so we say accessibility is part of health. And if you have clients where they've got homes where there are no steps and they're easy to get around and have wider doors, that's a selling point. And it doesn't matter what, how old you are. You, you, know, you could have an accident any time or you know, if you have little kids, they trip on stairs all the time. So this is an easy thing that um, you can communicate if you see it in your project you know, as, a, as a healthy home benefit. So I really liked how a lot of you were getting into materials and durability and water on that last one. I really appreciated that. And that's opening us up to this next section, which is the materials section. And this is really all about um, keeping water out of our homes and then um, having more sustainable materials in our choices uh, in what we put in our homes. So when you're doing, when you have an existing home, this is kind of hard to find um, because it's already in place. But if you're helping a builder build a new home and sell it, and they have some of these features that they can show off, this is a great time to, to make some noise. So does any of the products have recycled content? Are they locally or regionally procured? Are they healthy? Uh, upfront energy, right? So not just energy usage in the utility bill, but how much embodied carbon did it went into a product? People are talking about that now a lot. So did the home contribute less, you know, like lots of concrete uses lots of upfront energy. Is it reused or refurbished materials? Is it bio-based? Does the wood in the house have a forest sustainability certification to ensure it wasn't damaging forest? And where does the waste go during the project? These are all things you can show off during a new construction or major rehab client that you have that you're helping them sell. So top or bottom, which one has, from a material standpoint, um, the best green feature and why? All right, so we've got a lot of tops, no carpet, and yeah. So from a carpeting standpoint, it's a not very sustainable material, oftentimes has to be thrown away. And then also from a health standpoint, it collects dust and pet dander and um, you know can create a lot of healthy home issues. So from both health and materials, having a hard surface substrate, whether it be wood or whether it be vinyl um, or whether it be concrete, um, that typically has a better materials uh, standpoint. Okay, from a materials uh, and durability standpoint, left side or right side, which one is the better choice? And this is you peeking behind your client's uh, washer. Just you're going to look, I want to have you all, when you go to sell a house, look behind that washing machine and document what's there. Uh, or maybe pretend you don't know what's there, but <laughs> that's up to you. Right, yeah, you guys are smart. Left side. So. Stainless steel braided houses, 90% uh, less chance of leak, leaking in the washing machines. And so that's just an easy one that if you see it, flag it. Uh, if you don't see it, tell your client, hey, you might want to swap that out and, you know, it could go a long way and it's a cheap, it's a cheap fix. Um, okay, uh, looking at two different homes here and from a uh, materials standpoint, uh, which one is the more sustainable home? Right side, someone has a both. Left side, maintenance free. All right, well, I think I've, I've stumped you all on this one, uh, which is great. So if you look real closely, um, there are gutters all over this house, right? Very easy thing. But if you've got a home that have properly working gutters, uh, especially here in Michigan, that you know not having gutters leads to the deadly Michigan basement syndrome, unless you've got well-draining sandy soils, which you know requires like an engineering test to figure out. So you can see this other house on the right here uh, does not have at least no known gutters from you can see from the picture, uh, but that's a pretty easy one. Okay, top home or bottom home? Which one has um, the more sustainable materials focused features and why? And think about, you know, okay. Yeah, so 
some of you are getting this one and, it's, and that's good that's really good um and I, I guess the only thing that's unfair is you can't see the roof line from the bottom one but uh i'll give you that i'm glad you brought that up so well it's the top one for 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 not the reason you many of you were saying so the metal roof definitely you can't really see the roof on the other one but you could probably surmise that it's vinyl but what we're really looking at here is keeping all live plants at least 18 inches away from the foundation. And in this case, this one has a drainage system going around the house too, in place of the gutters, which you wouldn't have known unless you knew about this project and visited it. Um, so you wanna make sure, if you've got clients who've got their plantings away from their home, you can use that and say, hey, it's got a durability feature here because having plants near around bases of homes uh, can lead to pest issues or, or um, uh, uh, water entry issues as well. So, all right, um, water, water conservation. Um, water is going up in price all over the country and cities. Um, some people don't even have water right now, which is a real shame um, in Texas. Um, other areas like where I live, believe it or not, right next to Lake Michigan is running out of water, actually running out of water. Um, water has now been listed as a commodity, right? It's being traded like gold and oil, which you know is a very bad thing. So it's becoming more precious. So how do we help our clients communicate water savings if they have them in their house when they're selling or ones that are buying to help find water issues? And it's pretty much the easy stuff, right? So what is the label on your aerators? What are the gallons per minute flow, GPM? What, you know, document those. What is the gallons per minute flow on the shower heads? What do you see there? Um, looking at this photo here, what would you all quickly try to think is the lowest uh, flowing toilet, left side or right side? Right? Yeah you all would assume that the left side is, but the reality is um, there are a lot of now super low flow toilets where they're only single flush. And in fact, many of them are lower flowing than the dual flush ones and they perform better. Vacuum assisted technology. So the only way to know for sure without judging a toilet by its um, flusher, I guess, um, is to open up the, uh, the back and look in and you can see the label stamped on it. Uh, and it might be stamped on the toilet too, but look for that gallons per flush uh, label and see what it is. And so the first thing you wanna do is, you know, if your clients have water sense certified labels um, and, you know, uh, the toilets meet the water sense criteria, like 1.28, the shower is 1.5, the aerator is 1.5, you can easily say, hey, these have water uh, efficient devices. If you don't know what it is, you can do the, you can do the water test and you can hold up a, a uh, measuring uh, bucket on the water for 10 seconds and then uh, stop it at 10 seconds um, once you have that count uh, and that will get you the gallons per um, minute flow rate by doing some uh, math here um, based on what you put in there and we'll we'll send out the notes to the slide so you so you have that math but uh, that's a quick, easy way to figure out, you know, if you don't see the label stamped on it, if your clients have low flow devices. Uh, Energy Star not only tells you how energy efficient appliances are, but for clothes washers and dryers, uh, or not dryers, uh, clothes washers and dishwashers, they tell you how water efficient they are. So you can look for that Energy Star label and communicate water conservation. All right, so this one is kind of like the sort of fifth, part of the pillar, the last one that's sort of, a lot of it might be out of your control, especially if you're helping buy or sell an, an existing home and it's kind of in place, but there are several features you can identify from having that, that home's place, like how it fits in the community, where it is, and is it inherently sustainable or unsustainable given its location? So a big report just came out, I just saw it drop from uh, all the news articles this week about floods and about how many homes are located in areas that are inevitably going to flood here soon. FEMA's got some maps, but if you ever try to use the FEMA website, it is a, just a mess and I don't believe it's fully up to date. So this really cool program called the, the Flood Risk Factor. You can run a flood risk factor for free on your client's project or if you're buying a home. And if it's in a really good number, celebrate it, hand it out. Or if you're helping buy a home and it's a really bad number, tell your client, hey, 
you might be in a flood zone here and so you might want to get insurance or you might just want to be aware that you know you're buying something that is a bit of a risk um, so check it out at floodfactor.com and you can um, you can use that it's a free report to help you you know know what what's going to be going on you can also use walk score and you know say hey if you've got a really good score you can put that in the listing and say look this house is walkable it's bikeable it's busable there's a lot of community resources around and you can use that as a as a green feature selling point you might also come across homes with rain barrels you know those are good things to point out you might come across homes with native and adaptive drought tolerant plantings which are very easy to see if you're in the summertime and you can upsell those and sometimes those plantings can have uh, wild, they can, you can actually get your clients wildlife habitat certified. Some might not like that at all, but that just depends. And so, you know, this is another way to say, hey, you know, I, I want to dedicate a portion of my yard uh, to help, you know, the, bird, the bee, bee population or the butterfly population or you name it. And you can get this uh, label here from the National Wildlife Foundation and use it as another green selling point if your clients got you know a lot of these different plantings in their house. You can also go on to the US Fish and Wildlife Service and determine if a property that you're selling doesn't have any threatened or endangered species in that area. And you can use again that as a selling point. Hey, this home is not threatening any species and just put it on the list there. Um, and then ver vice versa, if your client's trying to buy a home and be cognizant of that, they can use this to avoid any homes that might have that. So ultimately, all these five pillars culminate in residential green building certification programs. So you might be saying, how do I like sort of measure this all? How do I articulate this all? How does it all tie together? Each of these programs look at those five pillars of green, Lead for Homes, National Green Building Standard, Green Star, and to some smaller extent, the Pearl certification, mostly on energy. And they look at all these aspects. And so um, more and more of these homes are getting certified. And so you know, maybe you're already helping someone buy or sell one of these homes and you didn't even know it. You can head over to greenbuildingregistry.com and you can punch in a location and uh, you can even punch in specific addresses and up will pop a huge list of all the energy labeled and green certified homes in the area. And more and more are getting added every single day. We're helping add more as more homes get certified. And you can just get a sense for you know, what certifications are out there in that community and what's around the area if someone wants to live in a more area with, you know, more certified projects, you know, you name it. Um, but, you know, uh, sooner or later, you know, homes that are being sold uh, are going to be listed on this when they have, you know, these these green labels. Um, and so with that, I am going to hand it over to my colleague, um, Brett, and he's going to kind of tell you a little bit about some of the uh, you know, what's going on locally and with the multiple listing service. So Brett, take it away. Brett, thank you very much. Um, I am going to try to share my screen here. And is it sharing, Brett? <clears throat> it is not. Oh, geez. How about if I do this? Yeah, can you take that back at all or not? Oh, there we yeah, go. I can take, yep. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to have to go through all this. Sorry. That kind of screwed me up. Okay. Here we go. So, as Brett said, my name is Brett Bradevog, and I'm a realtor, Berkshire Hathaway in Grand Rapids. And I have been working with Brett for a while um, to try to figure out the best way um, to get more data on um, green building uh, in the Grand Rapids area because we, we seriously lack data. Um, so I'm going to give you a short little presentation of why green is important in our industry in the real estate industry um, so if we were in a buyer's market which we are definitely not right now um, but in any normal market where there's actual inventory um, 
it's pretty important to be able to differentiate yourself from the competition. And uh, last year I embarked on a uh, goal of trying to get all of my listings energy certified um, prior to listing. And I did this because it's pretty interesting, especially this kind of all started around the, um, the time when we had the shutdown due to COVID. And uh, when you get your, your uh, home energy certified, they're gonna show all the, the features of your home that you, the buyer is not normally seeing. So in this picture, obviously, you'd be able to see that there's solar, but you're not peeking your head up in the attic and seeing that there's R49 insulation or that the rim joist is uh, insulated, you know, with foam insulation. Um, typically, when you're looking through a house, you're not looking at that stuff. And um, especially during the shutdown, you weren't even allowed to go into houses. So we started getting them energy certified. It would give a whole booklet of um, all the information about uh, the house and kind of the inner workings of the house. Um, second reason that I get it, an energy certification is how many times do we get asked as uh, listing agents um, about the utility costs of a house? People care about that. I mean, I, I would say 50% of buyers um, during a, a normal market um, ask about utilities before they, they make an offer. Um, and I have clients as when I'm a buyer's agent, they're saying, well, can you find out information about the utility costs? And I, having a certification um, or at least that documented on the on the listing I think is important and it can save you a step um, the other thing is yeah it highlights um, we already talked about that hidden features of the phone or the home that the buyer is normally not going to see uh, in the 15 or 20 minutes that they're walking through the house so but what I am using it for in this market I am the Grand Rapids market is insane um, right now because of low inventory. And I think it's the same around the whole country. Um, but we're seeing cases of, you know, every house has 10 to 20 to 50 offers in on it and um, going for 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars over asking. I know um, I have some some friends who are in California and a friend of mine told me about she just sold her listing for four hundred thousand dollars over asking so um we're running into a problem here in the fact that uh we're selling houses for way over what an appraiser can find as market value and so i have been using energy certification to boost appraisal values um and i'll kind of go into some specifics with that um, in a moment. But th the problem that I run into with, with this um, is that there's not enough data to support that an energy certified house in our area in Grand Rapids is worth 5% more than a non um, certified house. And that's the statistic that's kind of the nationwide statistic that we all go by. Um, and, and Brett mentioned it before that that study from Elevate Energy, which by the way, tune in next, is it next month that you're uh, interviewing Pamela? Yeah, the 10th, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tune in for that because their study that they did is, is really pretty awesome. Um, but they you know, did a study across the United States about um, values of, of energy certified homes compared to non-certified homes. And in most markets, that statistic remains true that, hey, if it's certified, it's going to sell for 5% uh, above its non-certified competition. Uh, but in, they did a, a one specifically to Grand Rapids, a study, um, uh, appraiser case study. And um, it is the problem that I run into all the time. There's not enough green data in our area for an appraiser to be able to make a um, conscious decision about speculative value of energy efficiency. And so that's what I really am striving to do is uh, come up with a local case study where we can show that an energy certified house is more valuable. Um, and so, for instance, an example of what I just did last month at a buyer 
bought a house for cash, $40,000 over asking. He did a cash out refinance um, once he uh, closed on it because he needed to pay his parents back for giving him the cash to buy the house. And um, we were really worried about that appraisal. The house was listed at 280, it sold for 320, um, actually sold for 318. And um, so what I did is I brought in a third party certification company um, that Energy certified this house because I knew while I walked through that this house was gonna score really well. Really great updated insulation in the attic, new windows, insulated rim joist, newer mechanicals, newer roof. So I knew it wasn't gonna be a problem. Um, and sure enough, he texted me yesterday. It, the appraisal came back at 320. Um, we made sure that the appraiser had all the necessary documentation that they needed. To, and I, I hope that it helped. Um, and I think that it did because man, being able to uh, jump $40,000 over, um, you know, list price, which it was priced correctly, according to comps, um, was really cool. And so I've done that three times this year where I've sold a house for way over asking and we were worried about the appraisal. And so I would get it energy certified and um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the coming slides. But um, so yeah, the solution to this problem is we as realtors need to be able to document green features on the MLS and do it correctly so that appraisers have data that they can use to add value to these um, energy retrofits. So how do we do this? Um, first of all, most of us in Grand Rapids, um, Southwest Michigan, we have a green MLS where we have green features that we can click and is searchable by an appraiser. Um, we have access to a green seller's disclosure statement. I'm, I'm sure there's one for every state um we have one specifically for swim rec um and then lastly third-party verification um and the filling out of the green appraisal addendum so this is a little snapshot of our green mls and the features that we can um, click on and can, that can populate in a search um and it is a little bit outdated and brett and i have been talking about and trying to work on it for years um but it's a very, uh, the boards are very hard headed when it comes to changing things on the MLS. So we are still butting up against that. But you know, you can see in there that um, you, can, you can click active solar. It's crazy to me. I see oftentimes in a picture on the MLS, I will see that it has solar, but then I go to look on the, the features and they haven't documented that. Well, that's a huge um, non-helpful thing for a realtor to do uh, because that's basically um, not giving any value to solar. Um, on the Facebook page for uh, West Michigan appraisers helping uh, real estate agents. And every week somebody writes, a realtor writes in, hey, my client has a solar array on the roof. Um, what's the value? And the answer always is, well, it's of no value unless there is a comparable property um, that's sold within the last couple of years that we can use as, as evidence of value. Um, so just simply clicking that you have solar is gonna help out. Um, but one thing that I found is really quite helpful is the seller's green disclosure statement. And we have access through Dot Loop through our Southwest Michigan, um, document section it's called the seller's green disclosure statement and it's a three-page document i only have two pages um, but where a seller can basically go in and check boxes where they have hey i have replaced windows i have updated insulation in my attic um i have uh you know central or a oh, natural ventilation system or whatever Whatever they have, they can click those boxes. You can add it to your document section of your listing. And you can also click the little button that says that you've attached the sellers, the green seller's disclosure statement, um, which is gonna be helpful for appraisers who are looking for other properties who have green features. Um, it also helps you fill out the green MLS 
Um, so you just look through there and then you click the boxes that they've clicked. And then that's gonna populate in the searchable um, format on the MLS. And lastly is third-party verification. Um, I talked about how this last year I tried to get all of my um, listings Perl certified. So just to talk about Perl, there's there are several verification companies that you can use out there that are really good. Um, I found that Perl is the one that is a little bit more focused on residential realty um, and real estate, and um, they provide these pretty cool packets where you'll have a display book. Um, they come in, they do the whole um, evaluation of your home, blower door test, um, and document all the assets of the home. Then they're going to put it in this nice, concise book that you display at your um, at your listing for buyers to look at. Uh, they also give you display cards to put around uh, the house to point out these these features that normally a buyer's not going to look at. Um, so there'll be you know this is a high efficiency furnace, and you put it right on the furnace, and it says you know this furnace is more um, energy efficient than 90% of the homes in this area or something like that. I'll give you a statistic. And the most valuable thing is that they fill out the green appraisal addendum. Um, and it's, I don't know how many documents it is or how many pages it is, but um, it is a, a approved document by the Appraisal Institute. Is that correct, Brett? Yes. Um, yeah, that that was written by um, uh, the lady who kind of forefronted, um, you know, green value in a, in appraisals, and uh, it it basically mandates that if the appraiser has this document filled out, they have to use the information on it to add value. Now, that doesn't always happen, as Brett knows quite well, and. Sometimes you, you're going to get an appraiser who's just not going to be trained in this and they're not going to add any value to it. Um, but they are, and we're working on that right now, trying to figure out the best way to um, really make sure that they use this document the way that they should. Um, and lastly, with, with the Pearl certification, they're rolling out this new thing called Green Door, um, which is basically a branded um, program that you're uh, buyer or seller would get after a pearl certification um, that you know gives them reminders of when they need to change filters out or um, might need to look into getting a more efficient um, furnace or hot water heater and you know your branding pops up when that stuff happens so it helps you keep your face in front of your um, buyers or sellers um, throughout the years so that is basically what I have um, what do you think, Brett? Did I cover everything? You got questions for me? Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. And we're gonna, we're definitely gonna get into questions here um, before we wrap up here, real quick, and 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 dive into the uh, the Q and A section. So, thanks for for joining us. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm probably hiding here right now. So let me. There I am. Um, so just real quick before we get into the Q and A section. Um, uh, along with Pearl, where they've got a really nice way to document uh, energy efficiency improvements, just like um, Brett had mentioned. Um, we've got a program on our website that's free and open source called the Green Star Checklist Tool. So you can use this to, again, go through and document many of those things I just talked about earlier um, and use that to kind of communicate how green a home is. Potentially, if there's enough, of these items, you can actually uh, certify it. And the benefits to that are huge. And so again, if you're working with clients who are being able to certify their homes or buying certified homes, um, you know, we're seeing studies come out all around the country, not quite the Midwest just yet, but we're getting close of anywhere up to 3.5% to 9% more value on uh, certified homes um, in some, some capacity to these green certifications. This is really cool. This just came out um, uh, recently, last week or two weeks ago. National Association of Home Builders did a study this summer, 
and they found two real key things that I wanted to point out is that average buyer will pay as much as $92,292 more for a home, new or existing, to save $1,000 annually on their utility costs. And buyers are generally willing to spend more on green certifications as well, including $2,000 more on upfront um, for uh, green certified above code homes, which is typically around the cost to do it. Um, and there's more resources out there. Uh, Realtors, uh, the Realtor um, uh, National Association of Realtors releases a yearly report, and we always have them back on here. Um, so we'll hopefully have them on maybe in in April or uh, to talk about their 2021 report. In the 2020 report, 70% said energy efficiency promotion in listing was very or somewhat valuable. 61% res said respondents found clients were at least somewhat interest in sustainability. 40% said properties with solar panels increased their perceived value. So you can check out more on that study if you want. Um, we are launching a new credential here called the Green Home uh, Associate Realtor. And so you can check that out on our website and we'll send out more information if you wanna become an official um, associate realtor and go through our training program. Um, other than that, there's a lot of next steps. Utilize that Green Star checklist, become a Pearl partner, find a Pearl partner to work with, hire a green home inspector, home energy score assessor, sign up for the Elevate Energy High Performance Home Value Alerts, join us on our webinars and monthly educational events, attend our Green Home Realtor 101 course that we'll be hosting soon, and become a certified green home realtor. Um, well, I wanna thank all of our uh, guests here today, um, uh, Tammy and Brett for tuning in, and we're gonna stick around for questions and even introductions if there are time uh, when we officially end the webinar to see who's out there doing this. We wanna hear from you, we wanna unmute you and give you a chance to chime in and learn about who you are and what you're doing and how we can work together. And before we wrap up and get to questions, um, a lot of you asked me this, so I'm gonna put it right here. Where is my certificate? It is in your spam folder maybe, um, but an email will be sent to you with your certificate. Look for something just like this. Check your spam and make sure to mark customer care at GoToWebinar as safe and you will get your certificate. And if you are a person from the future, watch this on demand, get an 80% passing rate. You can watch it on the GBCI channel or you can find it on our Thinkific channel and access it and take your quiz, pass the quiz and get your CEUs. Huge thanks to our board of directors, our volunteers, our top tier sponsors, Mitsubishi Electric, Going Net Zero All Electric, Air Source Heat Pumps, Ream Air Source Heat Pumps for heating water, Going Net Zero, Going Zero Carbon All Electric, Build Equinox, Serve, helps ventilate a home intelligently, knows how much, what the air quality is in the home and ventilates it right as needed. Um, so yeah, let's see what kind of uh, questions were coming in here um, and what uh, what kind of uh, comments we had. We had a lot of great comments. There was a comment about um, you know the green disclosure form um, and even the multiple listing service. And absolutely, your local realtor consortium, however it is structured, is going to be the one that will tell you whether there is a, an official green seller's disclosure form or an official green multiple listing service. Um, so if you're in your community working and selling homes, get involved in your board, Get make start making some noise, get on the board, and then you'll have voting power. And get a green disclosure form passed and approved. Get a green multiple listing service added, and you can go to greenmls.com or .org, and they give you all sorts of resources and tools to, um, to do that. So uh, another question that came in here for you, um, uh, Brett, was uh, how much uh, you know does it cost to get Pearl certified on one of your properties? Yeah, so I believe a Pearl certification is around four hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Um, but I have partnered with a local Pearl contractor. Um, and have gotten that price down uh, because I do it in bulk. So it's kind of a, a negotiated thing. I think I end up, you know, I pay a little bit less than that. I don't know what the, the exact amount is, um, but it's a pretty cool thing. You know, if you can win a listing by saying that you're gonna do something different, like get a 
um, home certified, um, it's worth that money for sure uh, to to get it certified. And it, and it does come with a really good looking package. And um, so, yeah, I think the, the going rate is about $450 for the public. I'm muted. I, you know a lot about MLS systems. Somebody here was saying, do you see, I mean, do you know of any or see a future where the green listings aren't not just optional, but potentially mandatory? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think that we're seeing that happen in certain um, areas where it is mandatory. I think Chicago and Portland um, definitely have something like that, where at least they're they're getting close to it. And, um, you know, we talk about this on our board all the time that it's like millennials are the biggest group of home buyers right now. And they are a generation that expect energy efficiency. Um, they just, they're gonna expect a house to be energy efficient because they, um, that's how they, they grew up. And so um, really catering to that uh, demographic is gonna be huge for, for realtors in the future. Um, there was a question here about, um, Pearl being and having any association to uh, licensed realtors. I mean, there's no real connection. I mean, you can get a Pearl certified property and not have a licensed realtor involved, correct? That is correct. Yeah, it's it's available to the public. Um, yeah. Um, another question here on our uh, associates program. I just wanted to let everyone know. Yeah, that is. Uh, we have a general green associates program that's open to the public uh, to any, and we're looking at different specific trades, but as far as a realtor one goes, um, there is no formal uh, background requirement to getting that. So um, it's just more focused on uh, um, classes like this and things focused around uh, green realty. So, um, so that's completely fine there. So um, I'm trying to think if there's any, more specific questions here. Somebody had mentioned that they use the National Green Building Standard and they think it works well for remodeling projects and being able to certify them. It also has room certifications, although I don't know how much that is used. So thank you for, for, for putting that in there. Um, and it sounds like some other folks here were having some uh, concerns about selling homes with um, leased solar on it. Um, I don't think we run into that in Michigan just because we, we, our energy, our utility rate structures don't, um, give much incentive to leasing solar. I don't know if either of you've seen a problem with that before in selling a house. No, I don't think we're, we're there yet. Yeah. Good problem to have if you have it, I guess. <laughs> um, well, I guess at, uh, at this point, um, yeah. Okay. That's a good. That's a good question. So earlier I had mentioned uh, helping your clients identify if they've got highly rated MERV filters in their systems, um, and if their systems have those thick filters, that's a good thing that you can you can show off or point out. Now, just because it's not a thick filter doesn't mean it can't be highly rated to uh, to capture airborne particulates or viruses. Um, but the 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 thing is is that they're the the thicker you or the the higher rated you make those in older systems they can drag the efficiency of the furnace down and potentially damage it now there was a study by the california energy commission to say that that wasn't as bad as we all thought it might be so you kind of have to approach with caution but that's why i'm saying as a realtor you don't need to like worry about all that stuff you just need to see if there's a thick filter that's easy to see you know that it's going to have a high efficiency you know you can sell it as a high efficiency rated filter and you don't have to think about the rest of the building science behind whether a smaller filter might destroy the system. So it's a good question to have. I just mean you don't have to think that hard about it. It's just when you see those uh, those larger filters. So. Hey, Brad, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Quick? So um, what I did in the past, there is a designation or a certification that realtors can get. It's called Echo Broker. 
So I was just looking that up. So you could do for the first year is 292. It is a good designation and it kind of goes over the overall theme of green. Um, and I know you're doing some stuff with the Green Home Institute too, which is gonna add to it. But if someone's looking to get that designation, it um, it's a good course to take for the realtors. Do those have con ed requirements that you have to take? Yep, yep. Yeah. 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 And, and thank you, Marcy. You know, NAR, National Association of Realtors, has a green designation, which I don't think has Con Ed. Uh, and Earth Advantage, our good friends over in Portland, do have a, a really cool broker program for uh, Earth Advantage Broker. And I don't know how far it, it goes outside of the greater Portland region or Oregon. Um, but if you do live over there, um, it's it's pretty cool. I would check that out if you're in the Pacific Northwest. So um, thank you, Tammy. Well, at this point, um, I do not see. Um, oh, the, thank you. Yeah, I need I need to bring that up. So I did want to bring up one quick last announcement to those of you in in the West Michigan area in Grand Rapids. Elevate Energy wants to talk to people who have bought homes in the last two years in the Greater Grand Rapids area. Um, they'll be talking about the home buying process and what features people were interested in while looking at their home. It's a one-on-one -on -one online interview for one hour and participants will receive $50 incentive to um, give out information which will all be kept co confidential. So if you know anyone, if you're in Grand Rapids, you know anyone in the last two years that you helped buy a home, kept, um, sync them up with um, Pamela um, Brookstein over at Elevate Energy. We'll send you out their contact information uh, in a follow-up email too, um, but you can you can find our information online. And um, hey, 50 bucks for for your owners, and they can answer some questions on this uh, on this study. So um, I want to thank. Uh, we're going to stick around after we end the recording here, but I want to thank all of you uh, for joining us here today, and um, hopefully you'll continue joining us on our Green Home Realtor series throughout the year. Um, and again, just a, we want to we want to see you all in person, um, and we hope to do more in-person events here sometime. But we need you all to help beat this thing, to stay in when you can, to stay masked everywhere you go. And the other thing you should know is that building science will help if we can ventilate, add filtration to our buildings, properly manage airflow. We can get back to work safe. We can go back into other people's homes safely, and this goes way beyond just COVID. This helps us as we talked about earlier. So help us spread the message that we can use building science to help solve this crisis and we can work together um, and we can move forward and move on. So take care, have a great rest of your week. Stick around if you wanna join in the conversation um, and introduce who you are and what you're doing. Thank you. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.